at kayo ay tapat magpakailanman. Panginoon, maraming salamat o Diyos na ngayong umaga ay muli nyo kaming pinagtipon-tipon upang sumamba at sa oras na ito ay pag-aralan din Lord, ang inyong hong salita. Dalangin namin na ang oras na ito ay we will treat it with reverence and with utmost importance. Piniling namin, Panginoon, ang inyong banal spirito ang siyang malayang kumilos ang sa gayong Panginoon mabuksan ang aming mga isip ang aming mga puso sa mga katotohanan na nakapaloob sa mga talatang ito. Piniling namin, Panginoon, na kami bigyan niyo rin po ng matalas na kaisipan ng maayos na panusugan at higit sa lahat, Panginoon, ng puso na meron kong pagpapakumbaba at layunin na sundin ang inyong kalaoban. Dalamin din namin, Panginoon, ang inyong kalitkasan sa mga hindi pa nakakikilala kay Kristo bilang kanilang Panginoon at nakapagligtas. Maraming salamat, Lord, sa lahat ng inyong gagawin at dahil dito ay binabalik lamang namin sa inyo ang lahat ng papulit pagsamba sa ngala ni Jesus. Amen. Long time ago, meron ng isang theolog- theologian na sinabi niya, God created man in His own image and man returned the compliment. Ibig sabihin ho, ang tao rin ay lumika ng Diyos, ng sarili niyang Diyos, sa sarili ho niyang wangis. Yun ho yung idolatry. Sinasabi ni Pablo na ang mga speculations, ang mga pag-iisip ng tao ay nagiging humhang, walang saysay, foolish, kapag ako ang Diyos ay hindi ho nag-glorify sa kanyang isip. Ang idolatry ay nagsisimula ho hindi sa kamay o sa gawa ng tao. Ang idolatry nagsisimula lagi sa isip, sa pag-iisip po ng tao. If God is not glorified, if God is not given thanks, but rather exchange for images, dun ho hindi nag-glorify ang ating Diyos. Nagiging futile yung pagsamba. Nagiging vain, nagiging empty, at syempre nagiging useless. And at the end of the day, nagiging, ano ho ito, karumalduman sa mata o harapan ng ating Diyos. Kung ang isip po ng tao ay hindi na nagagamit, para makilala ang tunay na Diyos at mahalin ng Diyos at i-honor ang Panginoon, ang, ang kaisipan na yon is already darkened and corrupted by sin. Kaya ho, ngayong araw na ito ay titignan ho natin yung karakteristik ng fallen sinful man. Kung inyo ho naalala na Sunday na bagit ho natin na ang puot ng Diyos or the wrath of God has been revealed and poured out towards humanity because of unrighteousness and ungodliness. Kaya ho, we also stress na mahalaga that a person become right with God that he must be imputed by the righteousness of Christ. For that is the only way that he can escape the eternal wrath of God. Kaya ho, whenever a person becomes foolish, he would always, brethren, exchange the glory of God for the glory, for the lesser, for the lesser glory of images of man and animals. Yan ho ay idolatry. That is what we will be looking at ngayong umaga yung foolish exchange because of idolatry. And then next Sunday, God willing, ho, I, we will be looking at the second part of this foolish exchange, with, which is the exchange of sexual relations with the opposite sex for sexual relations with the same sex, which, which we call, or as the Bible calls it, homosexuality. And Today, our focus will be on verses 
21 to 23. Yung second part will be verses 24 to 27, which we will be uh, we will take up uh, next Sunday. So our focus muna ay verses 21 to 23. So who yung tinatawag mo nating idolatry. We have seen last time that the truth is being suppressed. Being pressed down, okay, trying to cover up yung katotohanan. Ang problema ho, this is a universal revealed truth coming from God. Ibig sabihin kahit sa ang katumingin, nandun mo siya eh, testifying about God as the Creator. Pag tumingin ka sa puno, tumingin ka sa mga bundok, tumingin ka sa mga animals, tumingin ka sa bulaklak, tumingin ka sa kar- karagatan, tumingin ka sa mga tao. And even as you look at yourself, brethren, you cannot discount the reality and the fact na meron hong lumikha. That there is a God with eternal power and divine nature who is invisible and yet shown himself through the visible things around us sa mga nakikita ko natin sa paligid. And so, in suppressing the truth, ang sabi ng verse 21, people do not glorify Him bilang Diyos. People do not glorify Him and give thanks to Him. Kaya ho, ang kalalabasan ho niyan, wala ho silang excuse against the wrath of God. Dahil, hindi naman ho uh, nilihim o itinago ng Diyos ang kanyang kapangyarihan. Kaya ko nandiyan yung kamikasan, yung creation. Yung God's wrath ho is indeed just, karapat-dapat lamang na ipataw sa mga tao because, sabi ni Paul, they have the knowledge pero they keep on suppressing it. They do not live out yung knowledge na yun as they suppress it. Sabi nga ako ni John Piper, and I quote, The ultimate value in the universe is the glory of God and not the soul of man. So, tandaan mo natin yun, ano? The ultimate value in the universe is the glory of God. Wala hong tatapat nun, walang hihigit po doon sa ultimate value na yan. Hindi ho ang ating mga sarili. So the world must always revolve around the glory of God and not around the glory of man. Kaya ho, we can see here na ngayong umaga, ang ating focus ho is this foolish exchange para makita ko natin kung ano yung sinasabi ni Paul dito. So we can see some observations based on our text today. And we can see here, brethren, that Paul says that the fundamental o yung pinaka-bottom line or root problem ng human race ay meron hong kinalaman kung how we respond to the glory of God. Yun ho ang pinaka-bottom line. Ang pinaka-root problem. Ang sabi ni Paul, even though they knew God, they did not honor Him. Literally, ibig sabihin, they did not glorify Him as God. I remember, ho, there was one time na I was invited uh, when I was still in Ilocos. Ininvite ako sa isang Thanksgiving ng isang uh, college, sa isang university ko doon. And yun nga ang kanilang occasion was Thanksgiving. And many times, alam natin na whenever there are Thanksgiving occasions, uh, especially sa mga mga secular companies, ano, syempre, kandalas, ano, ang naitataas yung yung kumpanya, yung kanilang mga accomplishment. And of course, you have to also rejoice with them sapagkat uh, part yun ng blessing ng Panginoon, di ba? Kaya lang, ang, ang tanong, ano ang response ng tao sa, sa, sa Diyos, sa kanyang mga blessing, Ang Diyos ba nabibigyan ng honor? Siya ba nabibigyan ng glory? And so, in my heart, the Lord placed 
itong passage na ito. Itong passage na nakalagay na even though they knew God, they did not honor Him or they, or they did not glorify Him. And there were, there were some uh, people who were in attendance na sabi nila sa akin, alam mo, Pastor, dito ko lang naintindihan na ang lahat pala ng mga blessing na binibigay ng Diyos is not for the purpose of bragging about those things o pagmamalaki sa mga bagay na yun, but always giving back honor and glory sa Kanya. And ito ho yung fundamental uh, truth na nami-miss out ng maraming mga tao. Nakala ko, whenever we have accomplishments and we have done something uh, better than other people, now we already have or we are already entitled para ipagmalaki ang mga bagay na yun. Imbis na ibigay ang lahat ng kalbalatian sa Diyos. Many people do not acknowledge, do not value, do not honor, do not savor the greatest value in the universe who is God Himself. The glory of God. Yun ho yung ano, uh, epitome ng wickedness ng tao. Because of the pride of man, nais ho niya lagi yung glory ma-attribute sa kanya. Maibigay lamang sa kanya. Of course, some people will say na uh, thank you Lord, uh, uh, God is good, pero if God would only open the heart and expose it, makikita na because of the wickedness of man, ang talagang kanyang motibo and deep within his heart is really para sa kanyang sarili. Sa kanyang sariling kalawalatian. Yan ay bahagi ko because of man's rebellion against God. And here in verse 23, Sinasabi ni Paul na we exchange the glory of the incorruptible God for an image. So, yung great problem ho ng universe concerns kung ano ho ang ginagawa ng mga tao regarding the glory of God. Kasi yung glory of God ho is a constant. Eh. It will always be there. He is the God of glory even from eternity past. And it will last forevermore. So wala ho yung expiration. Tuloy-tuloy ho yan. Ang tanong, what do we do of the glory of God? Kaya ho, when Paul reaches to describe the depths of man's sinful condition sa ilalim ng puot ng Diyos, sinasabi niya na ang inuna ho niya rito ay hindi muna yung mga listahan ng mga kasalanan. Kasi yun ang madaling makita, di ba, yung mga, yung mga kasalanan. Uh, let's say, murder, uh, idol, uh, adultery, uh, sexual immorality, theft, etc. Madali ho makita yun. Pero, hindi yun ang unang dinil dito ni Apostle Paul. So, ang tanong, bakit hindi muna yun? Bakit hindi muna siya dumiretso na sabihin isa-isa yung mga kasalanan na ginagawa ng tao? Well, ang nais ko niyang i-deal mo na rito is the fundamental problem. Ibig sabihin, dito ang naging, ito ang naging root cause ng lahat ng mga kasalanan na ito. So, nagsisimula ako lagi sa puso, nagsisimula ako sa isip. And so, the first thing that we can see here, as we look into our next slide, that this foolish exchange is accompanied by futile speculations. Sabi mo ulit ang verse 21, Even though they knew God, they did not honor Him as God or give thanks, but they became futile in their speculations or sa kanilang kaisipan. Yung word ho na futile, means empty, vain, useless. Ang tao ho ay binigyan ng Diyos ng, ng isip, ng mind. 
Meron po tayong capacity to reason and imagine and speculate and meditate and ponder upon. Bakit po? Nang sa gayon, yung blessing na yon magamit po ng tao para malaman niya at makilala niya ang Diyos. To know God. To think about right thoughts regarding Him. To speak of Him and praise Him. At mag-isip ng mga bagay kung paano ho mag-glorify ang Panginoon. Pero, yun nga ho, because of the twisted and darkened state of man's mind, hindi ho nangyayari. Magandang halimbawa ho na na-record ng Biblia rito ay yung istorya ko ni Nebuchadnezzar, King Nebuchadnezzar. In Daniel chapter 4, ginamit po niya halimbawa yung kanyang isip para magtaguyod, mag-build ng Babylon. Sabi niya sa Daniel 4.30, Is not this great Babylon which I have built by my mighty power? So magaling siya eh makapangyarihan. Kaya lang, nung nagawa na ho niya yung kanyang kaharian, ang binigyan ho niya ng glory, hindi ang Diyos. Bagkus ang kanyang sarili. Kaya galit na galit ang Diyos sa kanya dahil sa kanyang pride at sa kanyang failure na gamitin yung kanyang position to acknowledge God na everything came from the Lord. So, bumagsak sa kanya ang galit at ang judgment ng Panginoon. Sabi ng Daniel 4.33, He was driven among men and ate grass like an ox and his body was wet with the dew of heaven till his hair grew as long as eagle's feathers and his nails were like bird's claws. So, can you imagine From a life of splendor, majesty, glory, and power, he was put to shame by the Lord. Because it was what he did was foolish exchange. Instead of giving glory to God, he gave glory to a creature, which is himself. Ang kanyang sarili. And so he was driven out of the splendor of his position and He became like a beast in the forest. Ang itsura ho niya, mukhang hayop na siya. Ang kasama niya, mga hayop. At ang pagkain niya, pagkain ng mga hayop. Well, that is not the end of the story, of course. Sabi ho ng verse 34 of Daniel 4, At the end of the days, I... Nebuchadnezzar so yung kanyang testimony lifted my eyes to heaven and my reason returned to me and I bless the most high and praise and honor him who lives forever so ano ko nangyari dito ginamit ko ng Diyos yung kanyang punishment kay Nebuchadnezzar so that Nebuchadnezzar will have a change of heart and mind, humbled himself, and then he acknowledged for the very first time sa kanyang buhay. He blessed the name of the Lord and honored Him. Ang blessing naman sa kanyang Panginoon Diyos ay He was restored sa kanyang former condition and position. So He blessed and praised and glorified the One who lives forever. Now, when the Apostle Paul says na lahat ng mga speculation at mga thinking ay walang saysay or futile dahil hindi nga ako binibigyan ng tao in his mind and heart yung glory ng uh, glory galing sa Diyos ibalik sa Diyos at yung pasalamat sa Kanya rather, ang sabi niyan ina-exchange so sa mga images. Yun ho yung nangyayari. Kaya ulitin ho natin, yung futility ho means nagiging empty, nagiging vain, nagiging useless ang mind ng tao if it is no longer used 
para makilala ang Diyos at mahalin ang Diyos and to honor and treasure God above everything. Kaya ho, whatever we do with our minds, if you remove God from the equation, kapag ka ho, ang ating hong mga kaisipan ay tinanggal natin ang Diyos, we put in everything, we add everything, and then we subtract God from our minds, that is utility, that is vain, brethren, even if we are the most brilliant engineer, scientist, doctor, all of those things, brethren, are vain if we use our reasoning only for our own good and for our own glory. Do not exchange God for other things because all our thinking will become useless and empty. Wala hong lasting significance. Pangalawa ho, in the next slide, the exchange, the foolish exchange is accompanied by darkness of heart. Darkness of heart. Kaya sabi niyan, their foolish heart was darkened. So why is the heart darkened? Bakit po? Nagkaroon ng kadiliman yung puso. Kapag ako pinagpalit ng tao yung glory ng Diyos sa ibang mga bagay. The answer is that the only light in the universe that can fill the heart with light is the glory of God. It's the glory of God. You know, it's like just just making an example uh, in in one Christmas story in the Gospels. Yung mga shepherds, di ba? When they were tending the flock, yung mga flock nila, gabi ho yun, madilim. Nagliwanag ho yung kanilang paligid. And ultimately, yung kanilang buhay. When the glory of God was revealed. Hindi lang ho yung external na light na kanilang nakita nung nag-appear yung mga angels. But the star that they met. Sino ko yun? Si Jesus Christ. That lighten up their lives. So that when they return from uh, from Bethlehem and return to their works, sabi ng Bible, they were praising and glorifying, glorifying God for all the things that they have seen and heard. Yun lang kung pwede magbigay ng liwanag to the otherwise darkened heart and mind of humanity. The glory of God. Kaya ho, we can see that when we compare halimbawa ho yung physical light with spiritual light, sinasabi ho ni Christ sa Matthew 6.22. Sabi niya roon, the eye is the lamp of the body. So then, if your eye is clear, your whole body will be full of light. Sa madaling salita ho, there is no light producing element in the body. Ang lahat ko nang liwanag ay siya nang gagaling from the outside. Sa labas ko nang gagaling yan. And the eye must be good if any of this light is to get into the body. And then, the body will see. So it is with the heart, brethren. The spiritual light na dinesign ng Panginoon para punuin ang ating mga spiritual eyes and spiritual heart. There is no light producing element in the heart of a wicked heart. It is all totally darkness, brethren. And unless the glory of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ will lighten or enlighten our eyes, brethren, it remains in total darkness. Because Jesus Christ is the light of the world. John chapter 8 verse 12 I am the light of the world and he who follows me will no longer walk in world in darkness but will have the light of light. He is the glory as of the only begotten 
from the Father. Sabi ng John 1.14. Kaya nga ho, ang prayer ni Paul sa mga taga-Ephesians, Ephesians 1.18, sabi ho niya, that the eyes of your hearts would be enlightened. So, it is only God's ano, ano, power that can really enlighten everybody's heart. Kaya sabi ni Paul in 2 Corinthians 4.6, Light shall shine out of darkness. So, ito ho yung sinasabi niya na, The one who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. So, the light has come. And the only light in the universe that can bring light sa puso ko ng tao is the glory of God. The glory of God is revealed, manifested powerfully in the gospel of Christ and in Christ Himself. Without the gospel, without Christ in our lives, brethren, we remain in darkness. No matter how we are enlightened in so many things, or many areas in life. Kung wala ko ang Diyos, sabi ng Bible, our minds are darkened. If we exchange the glory of God for other things, tayo ay namumuhay. Namumuhay pa rin sa kadiliman. Kahit nag-aano ho tayo, kagaling. Kahit na magsindi ho tayo ng maraming ilaw sa bahay natin. Pinakamataas na na watch ang ilagay natin na ilaw o bumbilya we still remain in spiritual darkness. So, mulod ho, pangatlo, next uh, slide. The exchange feels wise by those who do it. So, sabi ng verse 22, professing to be wise, they became fools. Sa isang natural man ho, paghiwalay sa grasya ng Panginoon, at madilim ang kanyang puso. Akala ho niya, lahat ng kanyang mga iniisip, even in religious matters, are wise. Or even wiser compared to other people. Kasi ho, ang ginagawa ng tao ay iniisip niya, I can design my own God. Pwede akong mag-invento o mag-create, mag-fabricate, manufacture ng sarili kong Diyos. And I can do that so that I will be able to, of course, He will not admit it, I will be able to manipulate. Because He will be like a genie in the battle. Na anytime I can, uh, I can command Him na ibigay yung aking mga wishes, whether it is three or more. So, when people create their own God, they are in total control of that God. Kasi sila ang lumikha eh. Di ba? And in the rebellion of man, ayaw niyang tanggapin na meron magkocontrol sa kanya. He's superior and that is of course God. So, for many, ang ginagawa ko nila, they have many gods. Kaya nga ho, ang religion na maraming Diyos o Diyos-Diyosan is the most appealing of all religions or of all faith. Hindi lang yung isa. Kinakailangan marami and you are in total control of those gods. And they are at your command. Your wish is their command. Ika nga. Ikaw yung nagpupul ng strings. Parang sila ay mga puppet. So in other words, making your own God lets you become the God of all these small gods na iyong nilikha o na iyong tinatawagan. And what could be wiser than the choice to be God? Kaya nga si Satan, sinabi ko niya kay Eve doon sa Garden of Eden, God knows that in the day you eat from the tree, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw the tree was desirable to make one wise, so yun ho, no? yung Romans 1.22, yun, eh? yung 
Akala ko, pretending to be wise, ang nangyari, nung kinain ko ni, ni Eva, sa kanya Adan, yung bunga na bawal, na kung saan ang sabi ng Diablo sa kanila, deceitfully, you will become like God, you will become wise, you will know good from evil, good and evil. So, pinain ko nila, pero that was a foolish mistake. A foolish action. Because instead of becoming wise, they became fools in the eyes of God. And they lost yung kanilang inheritance and their position from the Lord. So, kinain ko nila and the same story from that point on. That people would continue to disobey the Lord because they think na it is a wiser thing to do. Kaya minsan nga, ang tingin sa mga Christians o what is commonly uh, popularly known as yung mga born again, ano tayo, mga, mga born again Christians, nisip nila, tayo ay mangmang. Tayo mga mga crazy fanatics. So, inisip nila na, well, I would rather uh, move myself away from these uh, crazy people because I'm a wise person. Kasi nga, ang tingin nila sa atin ay tayo yung mga panatiko ng Panginoong Isus. Well, believe it or not, ang bawat tao ho ay mayroong kinasisiraan ng ulo. So, it's either the real God or false gods or what we call idols. So, ano ho ang pipiliin natin? Sinasabi ho ng, ng Bible, if you would turn with me, uh, let's go to Psalm chapter 115. Psalm chapter 115, 115. Simulan mo natin sa, sa verse 1. Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name. Anong sabi riyan? Give glory. For the sake of your steadfast love and your faithfulness. Why should the nation say, where is their God? Our God is in the heavens. He does all that He pleases. So yung supremacy, yung authority, yung pong sovereignty ng Diyos binabanggit sa verse 10. That makes Him, brethren, unique and totally different from the rest of the idols na ginagawa ko ng tao. Kaya ang sabi ng Sanbis, beginning at verse 4, Their idols. So, ibig sabihin, we have no part in that. Mga idolo nila yan. What we have is the God in the heavens who does all that He pleases. Ang sabi niya, their idols are silver and gold. Of course, when we, when we talk about silver and gold, in, in and of themselves, they're very precious. Di ba? Pero pag ginawa mo yung idolo, yun ho ang ano, kamangmangan. Wala na hong value yung mga bagay na yun. And we're not even talking about just creating a rebulto. If you have money, silver, gold, whatever financial uh, things you have in life, you, you, if you make them as your idols, brethren, you are already saying na ito ho, this is the source of my life, this is the source of my happiness, this is sovereign over my life, ito na ang aking buhay. So we're not just talking here, brethren, of literal idols. Although noong time na yun, nung sinulat ko ito, he was really referring to mga graven images. Their idols are silver and gold, the work of human hands. They have mouths, but do not speak. Eyes, but do not see. They have ears, but do not hear. Noses, but do not smell. 
They have hands, but do not feel, feet, but do not walk, and they do not make a sound in their throat. So we can see here the impotence. Yung walang kakayaha, kakayahan na magliktas. This is not even a personal God. This is just a figment of the imagination of man. This is not reality. And those who make them, sabi ng verse 8, become like them. So do all who trust in them. Kaya ho, when a person falls into this idolatry, brethren, he degrades himself. He is created in the image and likeness of man to fellowship with the real God and to worship the true God. Pero binababa niya ang kanyang sarili bilang nilikha ng Diyos in, in God's image and likeness. By what? By exchanging the glory of God to the glory of creations and worshiping things that are even lower than Him. Can you imagine that, brethren? You worship things that are lower than you. We are only created to worship the one who is higher than us. And that is God, the Creator, and Jesus Christ, our Savior. Kaya, ang appeal dito ng, ng author, O Israel, trust in the Lord. Okay? Not in the idols. Trust in the Lord, He is their help and their shield. O house of Aaron, trust in the Lord, He is their help and their shield. You who fear the Lord, trust in the Lord, He is their help and their shield. So we can, we can see here, brethren, that that is the thing. The problem is that when man, kasi yun ho yung pinaka-critical verse yun, yung verse 1, eh? na to us, O Lord, na to us, but to your name, give glory. When we give glory to the Lord, brethren, he only, we only worship Him. He alone is our God. And we stick faithfully to the first commandment which says, Thou shalt have no other gods beside me. Sabi ng Panginoon. Now, in our last uh, point, number four, in the next slide, this foolish exchange is totally nonsense. Even though, parang from man's point of view, parang it makes sense. Pero in God's point of view, it is totally nonsense. Kaya sabi ni Paul, at the end of verse 22, professing to be wise, they became fools. So ito ho yung fourth observation ni Paul. It is foolish to exchange God for images. Isa hong kamangmangan na lumikha ka ng iyong sariling Diyos or be your own God. It is foolish to lean on futile speculations and to walk in darkness. So why is this foolish exchange brethren of God for images really nonsense? When magbibigay ang, ang apostol natin, si Paul, ng mga sagot dyan, and we will be looking at yung uh, dalawa na sagot niya, and then yung pangatlong sagot niya, we will save it for next week in verses 24 to 27. So yung una ho, Paul shows that the exchange is foolish by emphasizing the infinite difference in value. Difference in value between what you trade away and what you get in its place. You know yun eh. Whenever there is a trade happening, di ba, or swap na tinatawag, di ba, minsan you, you see that sa mga, let's say, sa FB, uh, meron mga nag-post 
sabi nila swap halimbawa so yung isa-swap mo na ano na item kinakailangan same value so napaka ano naman napaka foolish naman nung magpapaswap na kung saan halimbawa yung yung value ng kanyang item let's say 30,000 and then yung isa-swap sa kanya worth 3,000 and then tatanggapin niya so kasabihin mo kasi na ulo itong tao ito. Mukhang nawala na yata ng, nabawasan na yata ng tornilyo yung utak niya. Dahil ang layo, 30,000, tapos 3,000, tinuha niya. Pero, yan ho ay isang halimbawa na hindi pwedeng ipantay dito sa eternal, infinite value na pinagpapalit ng tao. Very infinitely small in comparison to the infinite God na pinagpapalit po ng tao. Kaya sabi ng verse 23, In their folly, they exchange the glory of the incorruptible God for an image in the form of corruptible man. Literally ho, pag binasa mo yan, sinasabi, they exchange the glory of the incorruptible God for a likeness of an image of corruptible man. So, we can notice here, ang tao ho, sabi ng Genesis 1.27, nilikha sa wangis ng Diyos. Amen? Hindi ho ang Diyos ang nilikha sa wangis ng tao. Kaya at the beginning, di ba, sabi ko nga ho, I quoted one theologian, sabi niya na, God created man in His own image, and man returned the compliment. Gumawa rin siya ng kanyang Diyos trying to what? Imitate God. Pero siyempre, he can, he can never create a God na exactly Diyos. Pero ginawa ko yun. Noong mga Israelites, tinry ko nilang gawin yun ng panahon ni Moses at saka ng kanyang kapatid si Aaron. Noong matagal hong bumaba si Moses from uh, Mount uh, Sinai, akala nila baka na, namatay na roon. They pressured Aaron nagdumawa ng kanilang sariling Diyos to lead them to the promised land. So si Aaron, no, succumb to the pressure, hiningi niya yung mga jewelry suno nila, and out of those gold and silver, nag-fashion sila ng golden cup. At sabi ni Aaron, this is your God who will lead us to the promised land. So, pinagpalit po nila yung incorruptible God to a corruptible God. So, ang tanong, ano kung nangyari doon sa God na yun na kanilang ginawa? Eh, winasap lang mo ng Diyos. Di ba? At yung mga tao ho na ayaw mag-repent, pinatay ng Diyos. The most foolish thing na ginawa ho ng panahon nila Aaron. So, do we see here, brethren, what Paul is doing? Ano? Sa kanyang sinasabi sa mga salitang ito. Ang kanyang in-emphasize so, is the infinite difference in value between the real and the copy. Naalala niyo yung pelikula na pelikula ni Sharon Panetta. Para medyo magising lang ito sama yung The Lake Sherry Hill. Bituwing walang dingding yata ang title mo. Diba? Sherry Hill kontra Bina. Anong ginawa niya? May hawak siyang baso. Tapos sabi niya, you're nothing but a second rate, trying hard, copycat. Copycat ko eh. God is the only God. Everything else is a copycat. God is the only one who is the glorious God and everything else, brethren, is without glory. God is the only incorruptible God. Everything else is corruptible. God is the only sovereign God. Everything else is an impotent God. God is the only holy God. All else, all else are polluted gods. 
At sabi ng Bible in Psalm 115 na binasa natin kanina, and those who trust in them will become like them. Do not exchange your God for anything, brethren. Exchange everything for Him. Ulitin ko ko. Do not exchange your God for anything. Exchange everything for Him. Tayo ho ay namumuhay sa isang kultura na namamatay na ho. And we're not referring of course to physical death. Given naman ho yan. Pero yung kultura ho na ang, mag, ang masama, tingin nila mabuti. At ang mabuti, ang tingin nila ay masama. Yung mabuting ginagawa, sabihin nila, ay ano yan. Walang kwenta yan. At yung walang kwenta, sabihin nila, maganda yan. Ganun ako patuwi sa utak ng tao. And the glory of God is far from the mind of our culture today. It is all about the glory of oneself. They have exchanged the glory of God for the glory of creation and for the glory of oneself. And this is futile and dark. Dahil pinagpalit mo yung pinakamahalagang value sa mundo, the glory of God to a much, 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 much lesser value, the glory of man. Now, the second way, in the next slide, the second way Paul shows that this dark exchange is foolish is by observing that the glory of God is incorruptible and man is corruptible. Sabi mo riyan, they exchange the glory of the incorruptible God for a likeness of an image of corruptible man. Pag sinabing corruptible, ibig sabihin, nagpa-perish. Nawawala. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of God stands forever. Sabi na Isaiah 40, verses 7 and 8. The grass and the flower, brethren, describes and represents everything that was created. Everything withers, everything fades. So, pagka binabaliw ho natin ang ibang bagay, more than God, and if your life is really driven by another value, then you are exchanging the imperishable for the perishable. Parang tinitrade mo yung diamond. Diamond tinitrade mo siya sa isang bato na napulot mo lang niya sa kanil. Kaya ho, why don't we do the opposite, brethren? Gawin ho natin yung kabaliktaran. Yung sinasabi ho ni, ni Paul sa aklat ho ng Philippians, hinihiling ko na tayo ay pumunta as we will be ending soon. Philippians chapter 3. Philippians 3 Simula ho tayo sa sa verse 4 Verse 4 Though I myself have reason for confidence in the flesh also if anyone else thinks he has reason for confidence in the flesh I have more circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. So yun ho yung kanyang napaka-impressive na credential or resume. Of course, that was, you know, his, uh, what he was boasting of prior to knowing Christ. Pero nung nakilala niya ng Panginoon, ito ang kanyang testimony. But whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. 
Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For His sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish or garbage in order that I may gain Christ and be found in Him not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law but that which comes through faith in Christ. The righteousness from God that depends on faith. That I may know Him and the power of His resurrection and may share His sufferings becoming like Him in His death. That by any means possible, I may attain the resurrection from the dead. So what do we see here? In the past, nung siya hindi pa kristyano, ito ho yung kanyang mga trophies, ika nga, na pinapangalandakan. From verses 5 hanggang verse 6, yung kanyang family, yung kanyang background, yung kanyang, yung kanyang religious position, yung kanyang zeal in, the, in His service to the Lord, ika nga. Pero sabi niya, all those things are really no value at all in the eyes of the Lord. Kasi doon ho niya inilagay yung kanyang ano, pag-asa. Ang mga ito ay naging, naging ano lang, naging Diyos niya. Nakakala niya ito ang paraan para siya ay kaluguran ng Diyos at siya ay maligtas. Iniwan niya ang lahat ng mga yun. Nung iniwan niya ang lahat ng mga yan, siyempre marami nagsabi, sila ulo tong si Paul. Iniwan niya ang kanyang posisyon bilang isang pariseyo. Ang dami nangangarap na maging isang tagpagturo, taga isang pariseyo. Inabando niya yung mga bagay na yan. Pero sabi niya, that is a loss. Pero whatever loss I had, wala namang katulad yung aking tinraid for those things. Nung kanyang kinumpara sa kung anong kanyang nakuha, nagmukhang basura yung mga bagay na yun na napakahalaga sa kanya. Nagmukhang basura ho siya. When placed side by side sa kanyang nag-gain kay Christ. Why? Because Christ is the pearl of great price. He is the eternal, infinite value. That when we have Christ, we have everything. Kaya sabi nga ng kanta ng isang sovereign grace na, uh, Hallelujah, all I have is Christ. If we have Christ, brethren, we have the eternal value, not only here, but in the next life. I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. Friends, do we know Christ? Not only in our minds, but as our Lord. Kasi yun ang sabi ni Paul Rita, the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. Knowing Him intimately, knowing Him personally, First and foremost, because Christ will not be of value for you if you do not know Him personally. You know, it's like a relationship in marriage. You will only know the value of a woman once na siya ay naging asawa mo. And that knowledge of the value becomes more and more flourishing as the years go by dahil lalo mo nakikilala. And you are willing to leave everything if, if, if it will interfere with your relationship with the loved one. And Paul had that in mind. He cannot get the best of both worlds. Sabi nga ng Bible na if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Kinakailangan meron ka trade eh. Hindi mo yung sabihin na you will resign from your work. Hindi mo sinasabing gano'n. But you must, brethren, learn to understand that 
the only thing that will matter at the end of the day is that you have the glory of God in your life and you have the God of glory and you have Jesus Christ who is the glory of the gospel. You know, pinakamalaga. For the rest of humanity, our hearts go with them. Dahil hindi nila kinala ang Panginoon. And this must, brethren, as I end, this must really stir our hearts. As we look around, beginning from our own family, sumasamba sa mga Diyos-Diyosan, pinagpalit ang kalabalatian ng Diyos, and then moving from our family, our neighbors, our office mates, and our classmates, we see them continually living in darkness with a darkened mind because they have replaced the glory of the Lord for the glory of mortal men and corruptible images. Let's continue to pray for them that they might be enlightened and that they might come to Christ Jesus. Tayo ay manalangin. Hallelujah. Father in heaven, you alone deserve glory, honor, and praise. You are the only God and you will not give your glory to anyone. Forgive us, Lord, for the times that we have forgotten who you are and what you expect from us, whom you have made in your own image and likeness. Forgive us, Lord, for the times that we belittle your glory and we do not have a high view of you. Dalangin namin, Panginoon, na maibalik sa aming mga puso your infinite eternal value in our lives. That you are the glorious, the most splendor God and nothing else, Lord, comes close to you for you alone are God. Nawa, Panginoon, sa aming mga buhay, ang aming mga isip ay magamit naman para magpasalamat sa inyo, magbigay sa inyo ng honor, ng papuri at ng pagsambat kalimalatian. Sa mga hindi pa nakakikilala Panginoon sa inyo, dalangin namin na sila'y kaawaan nyo rin. Buksan nyo, Panginoon, ang kanilang madilim na kaisipan at nawa o Diyos, ang cross ni Kristo, ang kanyang Ibanghelyo ang maipahayag sa kanila nang sa gayon, sa pagkilos ng inyong banal na spirito, sila o Diyos ay may alis sa lugmok ng kasalanan sa talikala ng Diablo. At sila, Panginoon, ay mapalaya at magkaroon, Panginoon, ng kalimalagan sa kanilang isip upang kayo ay kanilang kinalangin na siya lang dapat sambahin at purihin. Salamat po, Diyos, ito ang aming samot dalangin sa ngalan ni Jesus. Amen and amen.